So hello class, uh, this is the next subject, uh, and I don't see y'all till Thursday, so this is sort of like a two-part video, um, but I'm going to keep it under 15 minutes. Um, in this case, we're teaching you how to graph rational functions. Uh, today, I'm, uh, I should have taught you how to find the properties of rational functions. I'm going to teach you how to use those properties to graph it. Um, sorry there's no video of me. Um, it's about 5 in the morning, and I don't want to, nobody wants to see how I look like anyway, so... Um, let's go over these graphs of rational functions. So what we're going to do is two objectives. We're just going to show you how to analyze and sketch them and decide if they have slant asymptotes. And all this I should have gone over with you today. So how do you sketch it? So first I'm going to need a couple things. I'm going to actually type this up because it's easier. I need to find out where are the intercepts, okay, where does it cross over, and I also need to know where the asymptotes are. And once I have these, uh, once I have these two, then I should be able to figure out how this graph looks like. Okay. First I want to do, just to go by alphabetical order, is I need to find the x-intercept. Okay. To find the x-intercept, or where it crosses over, is I'm going to set my denominator to zero. Well, it's pretty simple, or sorry, set my numerator to zero, which is very simple because my numerator is just x, so x equals zero is my x-intercept. Okay. So x-intercept, all you do is set um, the numerator equal to zero. To find my y-intercept, um, it's a little bit different. What I do is I plug in 0 for all the functions. Okay? So if I plug in 0 for all the x's, okay, um, I'm going to get I'm going to get 0, well, 0 over 0 minus 0 minus 2. So my x-intercept is also 0, which sort of makes sense because you know, if, it, if it's x-intercept is x equals 0, um, it crosses over at 0, 0. So there's my x and y intercepts. Pretty simple. The hard part is for some people is the asymptotes. Okay? So again, going in um, alphabetical order, let's do the horizontal asymptotes first. Okay? To find the horizontal asymptotes, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the degrees of both the numerator and the denominator. Okay? And there's three special scenarios that I probably um, went over with you in class. Okay? So this is how it goes. My degree of my numerator is Yep, it's 1. And the degree of my denominator is, yeah, 2. So in this instance, where I have my denominator bigger than my numerator, okay, my horizontal asymptote is automatically 0. Okay, so um, y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. Okay? And then my vertical asymptotes are essentially, you know, these up and down vertical lines, okay? How do I find them? To find them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my denominator equal to 0. So let me type this up for you guys real quick. x squared minus 2x minus 2. And I need to set that equal to 0. And whatever x is to make this statement true, that's where my uh, vertical asymptotes are. So what I'll do is I'll solve this. First of all, what I tried was, you know, let me try factoring. But I realized there are no factors of negative 2 that give me negative 2. I can't factor this. So now you're thinking, you know, how do I, how do I solve for this? Well, what I have to do is I'm going to use completing the square. Okay? It's much easier than quadratic formula and all that stuff. And we already did, you already practiced it, so let's try this. To complete the square, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 2 to the other side, because I know the 2 does not make this problem perfect. Okay? Instead, I'm going to make or put in a number that makes it perfect. So what number? Should I put next to 2x that would make this polynomial perfect? Yeah, positive 1. And if you forgot how to do that, uh, I take half of the number and square it. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Times itself is 1. And since I added 1 on one side, I have to add 1 on the other side. Okay. Now that it's perfect, I can convert this into a parenthesis squared. You may have forgotten how this looks like. So it's x minus 1 squared, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay. And now it looks a little bit different than when we did it in class, but that's because we want it in vector form, in ve uh, vertex form, because I knew how to graph it. Okay, but this isn't a quadratic. Okay, so I, that's not. I'm not trying to figure out how to graph a quadratic, but instead I'm trying to figure out where my vertical asymptotes are. Because this is squared, to get rid of the squared again, I want x by itself. I'm going to square root both sides. I don't have a square root button, so I'm just going to use my slash. So do you see how? I got rid of the square by square rooting both sides. And then to get rid of the 1, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And because I take the square root of 3, there's a positive and minus square root of 3. So there's actually two vertical asymptotes, 1 plus square root of 3 and 1 minus square root of 3. Some of you will feel more comfortable uh, 
using a calculator to figure out what this is. Um, and I'm going to teach you like how to do it logically. You know the square root of 3 is smaller than the square root of 4, right? And what's the square root of 4? 2. So you know that this number is a little as a number a little bit less than 2. So 1 plus so even, you can even make up a number, maybe like 1.9, 1.8, and some of you may not like doing this, so you can use a calculator if you want to. So let's just say it's like 1.9. So one of my x, uh, one of my vertical asymptotes is going to be like 2.9. So I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote like so. In reverse, if this is sort of like 1.9, 1 minus 1.9 would be like a negative 0.9. So my other vertical asymptote would be like so. And then my x and y intercept is the same point, 0, 0. So I will draw that, that here. Okay. Last part is a draw it. Remember rational functions, we, we, you know, 1 over x, we drew it. It started off with like a little curve here and here. So I will start off with those. Because my, my horizontal asymptote goes towards 0. So um, if you want me to, I could, I could draw my... my horizontal asymptote for you. So at the ends, it goes towards zero. Oh no. Um, don't know how to delete this. Hold on a second. All right, well, it doesn't want me to delete it, so I'll just leave it like that, okay? And then on this side, what I'm gonna do is you draw um, the opposite. So you see how this is going down? This has to be up. And you see how this one is up? That means here on the bottom has to be going down. And I also know it has to cross over at this point. So I will draw and make it look like so. So this is how this rational function looks like. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. I have two more. Um, I want to sketch the graph of this one. Okay. Probably easier for me is to leave it in this form because um, I'll show you why. I told you I'm going to go in alphabetical order, so let's just do x-intercept first. Remember, x-intercept means I'm going to set my numerator to 0. Okay? So 2x squared minus 9 equals 0. Okay? I can divide both sides by 2. Um, I'll just do it right here. Divide both sides by 2. And then um, you probably know what numbers would make this statement true. It's going to be positive. x has to be positive or negative 3. So I actually have two x-intercepts, positive 3 and negative 3. Moving on, y-intercept. If you remember, to find the y-intercept, I set all my x's to 0 and see what number I get. And if I set all my x's to 0, I'm going to get um, 2 times 0 minus 9 over 0 minus 4. So if you do the math, what I'm going to get is a negative 18 over negative 4. Or to simplify, I'm going to get a 9 over 2. So now I have a y-intercept at 9 over 2. Some of you like decimals are converting this, so it's going to be a 4.5. Okay. Moving on, my horizontal asymptote. Um, this is a little bit different in, in terms of last time I had my degrees were different. But in this case, do you see how my degree is the same? I have a degree of 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. If I have that case, that means my horizontal asymptote will be um, essentially the fraction just considering the same degree. So since these are my degrees, these x squared, I don't even care about negative 9 and negative 4. So I'm going to convert this problem into 2x squared. And this is going to tell me my horizontal function, uh, horizontal asymptote. And this is just x squared. And when I reduce it or simplify this, just be this just becomes what number? Yeah, 2. So what I just found is my horizontal asymptote is 2. And lastly, vertical asymptote. Um, remember, I set my denominator to 0. This one's a little bit easier. x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then again, I'm looking for numbers that make this statement true. I have a vertical asymptote at um, positive 2 and negative 2. Okay. Now I have all information. I can start drawing. So first off, it says I have an x-intercept at plus and minus 3. So here's plus 3, 1, 2, 3. Here's minus 3. It says I have a y-intercept at 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5. I have a horizontal asymptote at 2. So I'm going to draw my horizontal asymptote at 2. 
and I have two vertical asymptotes, one at positive 2 and one at negative 2. So I know with all the stuff on a graph, I know some of you are already freaking out, but it's going to be okay. So I remember how for these rational functions, I always start with this one going down through here. So let me use a different color. I know this has to go like this. Okay, and I'm sort of looking also look at the dots to guide me. See, so I have a dot right here. That means this also has to go in this little corner here because the dot is right there and I have that horizontal asymptote. If the dot was here, I would draw it here, but since the dot is here and the dot is here, my rational functions have to go like this. Okay, and then since I'm sectioned off and I have a dot up here, this is a unique case where they both have to go up, right? I can't cross over these boundaries. So this one, oops, this one has to go up like so. Okay. All right, and the last one. Um, I already did some of it, but um, let's let's ignore that for now. Uh, let's let's do everything in alphabetical order again. X-intercept, which is take my uh, numerator and uh, set it equal to zero. This one. Um, this one actually does factor. My numerator factors to x minus 2, x plus 1. Yeah. So I'm looking at factors of negative 2 that if I add them, I get negative 1. And in this case, I have two x-intercepts, x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. Okay. Moving on to the y-intercept, remember to find the y-intercept. I'm going to set all my x's to 0. Um, so do you agree that at the top I get 0 minus 0? minus 2, yeah, and on the bottom I get 0 minus 1. So if I do the algebra, I'm going to get negative 2 over negative 1, or I'm going to get positive 2. So my y-intercept is positive 2. Horizontal asymptotes, what I'm going to do is, uh, remember I'm going to look at where my, my degrees are. Um, and when I look at my degrees, this is the last case, you'll notice that in this case, I actually have my numerator higher than my denominator. This is a special case where I do not have a horizontal asymptote, but instead I have something called a slant asymptote. Okay? To figure out how to get the slant asymptotes, you do synthetic division. Okay? So see how I started already? If this is x minus 1, I put a positive 1 in here. I put my coefficients 1, negative 1, and negative 2. I did synthetic division, and this is my division, right? The slant asymptote, I don't care about the remainder. All I care about is the polynomial. You see how this polynomial is x? I'm going to graph y equals the polynomial. So you see how this is x? So I'm going to graph y equals x. You should know at this point how to graph y equals x. So my slant asymptote, so instead of ha, I'm going to call it sa now, um, is going to be y equals x. So in case you do synthetic division and you get um, x squared, that means your slant asymptote will be x squared. Um, not very likely in this class, or say for example you get 2x plus 3, then that's what your slant asymptote is going to be. Okay. Last one is vertical asymptotes. Remember to do this, I set my denominator to 0. Um, so x minus 1 equals 0. My vertical asymptote is just 1. Okay. So let's put all these pieces of information on the graph so we could, um, we could draw it now. Um, I have two x-intercepts. I have one at 2 and one at negative 1. So here's my x-intercepts. Y'all agree? I have a y-intercept at y equals 2. Okay. I now have a slant asymptote at y equals x, so I need to draw y equals x. Nah. Sorry. Um, let me try this again. Um, I don't know how to... So remember, y equals x goes along this diagonal. Sorry, it's not the straightest lines, but a straight diagonal through here. Yeah, you all agree? And then I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. x equals 1. And again, this isn't straight, so I'm doing it on the mouse. So now, see how I have my four quadrants still? And you see where my dots are going towards? That's my hint on how I'm going to, to draw this. Okay. So looking at the dots on the left, do you see how here's my quadrant and it seems to go this way? So my left side should look like this. 
And on the right side, here's my little quadrant thingy, so I can't cross over these borders. That's what asymptotes are. So it has to look like something like that. So today in this video, it's over. Um, thanks for watching.